Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 82. It's on kinetic and potential energy. Remember kinetic energy is energy of motion and potential is due to its position. And so if you take a wrecking ball like this, a wrecking ball has a huge amount of mass. And so you can connect it to a big crane and as you move that crane back, you're storing some of that gravitational potential energy. And so when we release it by moving the crane, it has a huge amount of kinetic energy. And we can use that kinetic energy to do work. In this case, we're breaking down a building. And so if you have a system with internal structure, then there's going to be internal energy within that system. And that energy could be kinetic energy, that's energy due to its motion, or it could be potential energy, which is due to its position. Now if we set up this system in such a way that it's a closed system, in other words, we're not losing energy out of the system and we're not taking energy in, then as we convert kinetic energy in pot into potential energy, there's the conservation of energy. The amount of internal energy is going to stay the same. So if I knew how much potential energy that wrecking ball had, I could have figured out how fast it's going when it actually crashes into the building. And so here's a little PHET simulation that gets at that internal energy. So I've got a skateboarder here. And if we just let him go, when he's at the top, it's all potential energy. And when he's at the bottom, it's going to be kinetic energy. And so if we quantify that, this is what it's going to look like. And so total energy is going to be 3,448 joules. And you can see that the total energy across the top is going to remain constant. It's never going to change. But what's happening is we're oscillating from energy being potential energy. So you can see right now that almost all of that energy is potential energy. And then if I let it play forward a little bit, what's going to happen to that energy? It's now going to be converted to kinetic energy when the skater is at the bottom of that ramp. And it'll just be converted back and forth from potential to kinetic to potential to kinetic. And so if you watch the skateboarder, um, what's going to happen, he'll just keep going forever. And you know that's not how nature works. And so what we can do is we can increase the coefficient of friction. Now we're converting some of that energy into thermal energy, and then he quickly comes to rest. And so knowing this idea of conservation of energy, what you can do is figure out Okay, what's the potential energy and how much of that is converted into kinetic energy? And you can solve problems like this. So let's say we have a skateboarder who's at the top of the ramp at eight meters in height. So how much potential energy would he have? Well, we know the height. We know since he's on the earth that we know the gravitational field strength. So the only thing we have to figure out is what his mass is. And so he's gonna be 75 kilograms. And so here's our equation. It's mg times the change in y, where y is how far we are in that gravitational field strength. So we've got 75 kilograms, gravitational field strength at 9.8 and eight meters. And so how many uh, joules of energy does he have using significant digits? 5,900 joules of potential energy stored there. So a simple problem you could have in AP physics is, let's watch this skateboarder go. And so where's all the energy now? It's in kinetic energy. And so since we knew how much energy was in potential before, we could figure out that there's gonna be 5,900 joules of kinetic energy at the bottom. And we could also, if we know what that equation for kinetic energy is, which is 1 half mv squared, we could even figure out like how fast is that skateboarder going at the bottom. If we say that all that energy is converted from potential into kinetic, so we can set that up to our equation right here, where we put in the mass of the skateboarder, and then we simply solve for v. And so using significant digits, at the bottom, that skateboarder is going to be going 13 meters per second. And so what happens at this point, if we let it go, skateboarder is going to go up like that. So we could figure out how much energy he has there. So how would we figure that out? Another way to think about that is the energy from here to here is going to be converted into the kinetic energy that he has at this point. And so is he going to keep going? For sure, he's going to go flying off the edge of the ramp like that. And so did you learn to describe and make predictions about internal energy? Remember, if it's a closed system, the internal energy is going to stay the same. It's just going to be converted from potential to kinetic and then back again. And then finally, could you calculate kinetic energy if we know potential energy or vice versa? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.